we're in the beginning. And in the beginning, in the beginning, brothers and sisters, it was the beginning. And there was no one there. And eventually, someone kind of just showed up magically. Poof! A little bell went off and they were like, hey, that weird Canadian guy's got some kind of an interesting pepper going on in a picture there. I may or may not want to find out what's going on. I have a like, but there we go, some viewers. Hello, welcome to the chat. Wow, I shaved. Well, I trimmed. I don't really shave. I get ingrown hair, so I just kind of to took the trimmer to down. Change my chat. That's right. Change to live chat if you want to see absolutely everything. Punky, you made it. Welcome to the show, Punky. Give Punky a wrench. Everybody gets a wrench. Dane gets a wrench. Who else here? Eli gets a wrench. All right. So now that I'm done throwing out wrenches for the minute, what we have here is the ahi penic. Well, one of the ahi penics growing in the soil out back in the pepper patch. And my chat keeps disappearing. Um, the wrench basically, Dane, to answer your question there, it, you have the authority to post links and do all kinds of stuff, kick people if they're being ignorant and stuff like that. But the other, the other side of that is you're going to get kicked if you're being ignorant too. So, you know, use it, don't abuse it. Here we have another pod off that same plant. And I'm going to let this take a little bit more color in the kitchen before I uh, dive into this for seeds. But out of the two... This greeny one looks kind of scarier to me. It's a little more wrinkly, which I generally see as kind of a sign of a hot pepper. These ahis aren't supposed to be terribly hot, but I know somewhere along the line, what I was sent as seeds for the ahi panic has crossed with something because I have at least, well, counting that, I have at least three solid pod variations. The other one, was the aquaponic ahi panic, which was kind of skinny, and then you turn it, and it's this big round thing, and then you turn it sideways, and it's practically like a 2D pepper. So, yeah, that's... So we're up to three variations on this. I'm trying to save all the seeds individually to see if they'll grow kind of true to that. Afternoon, Uncle Wimpy. Uh, shocks and muse. Yes, you are here. She's right, right over there. Hmm? You should come join me. But I guess you're monitoring chat. John Lord, what? since you're cutting your hair, um, there's a patch on your top knot. No, I don't cut that. That would be this. I can only assume you're talking about this. This has been growing since just before we came out here. This is three years of I ain't cutting that. You got no parents to make me cut this at my age. So. I get to trim it soon. A gentleman allows a woman her illusions. She's she's going to try for that. I'm going to try and dodge it. We'll see how long it goes. But um, trim is the best that's coming out of that. This, though, was getting too itchy, and it was uh, surprisingly gray underneath. I'm really curious to see what kind of color is going to grow back in there. But uh, we shall see what's going on in that. Locks of love. <laughs> Locks of love, indeed. Uh, I want to grow a beard, but my parents make me shave. Well, you know, <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is listen to your parents as long as you're living <laughs> under their roof. <laughs> right. The second thing that comes to mind is, you know, go to college, uh, pay give your it own. Give it time. Give it time. Yeah, and give it time anyway. This is, I don't know. There are reasons I grow my beard. Actually, this is the reason I grow my beard. It's so childish. But anyway, uh, it's got to come dreadlocks of 30 plus years. I know. No, 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 no. I ain't going to do it. Wouldn't be prudent. Not at this juncture. Not going to happen. Mm, mm, mm. Why did I shave it, Kelly? Well, it was too itchy. It was getting kind of curling back into itself. And it was a lot of time spent scratching. I felt like I'm scratching the dog. I like, dog scratch me back <laughs> so i figured i'd give it a trim and uh kind of remind myself what my face looked like see how i feel about it still don't care for it much gonna grow my beard back 
It's uh, I do it what twice a year, Maybe. give or take. Normally, I shave in November just because everybody else is trying to grow theirs out. So <laughs> there she goes. <sighs> Does it make the high temps any better? Um, a little bit, not really, but a little bit. You, you know, you pretend kind of insulated from the bugs with the fur too, like the mosquitoes. I'm way more vulnerable to mosquitoes when I take the dog out at night now. Like this used to all be protected is my chin took. So it, that, it protected me a little bit in the summer from that. But uh, yeah, so what are we up to? We're up to 10 current viewers. I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe hoping for more than that. When I cut this open to see what we got going on here. So it's just bull for a little bit what do we got from john lord hey missy let jt go camping with me and i can get him close to the campfire <laughs> a tight marine haircut you do not want to see me with that haircut or that attitude that's there's a reason i'm a country boy and yeah there's a reason i grow my hair it keeps me in dangerous people are probably working calmer individual people probably are working but here we have my most recent pepper floating experiment. This is the three berry melomel and two of the ahi ahujapan peppers that were growing out front. These actually got to a really nice kind of orangey color. So I decided to cut those open today to save the seeds for those. Uh, if you've caught any of my like regular chili pepper kind of updates, it's, it's this waterfall of peppers just exploding off the front of it. So I like that quality in the pepper. I really want to grow more of those. So I'm going to be saving seeds from that and the matchbox for sure. <laughs> and it looks like that paper lantern out front is going to be right up there too, because it's starting to really buck out the numbers. So what is this? Uh, that PC, my dear, what uh, did to do? What is this? Franken pepper, GMO pepper with a sharp hay. What did I miss? You guys hear me? People probably put gain. Hang on. Let me see if it's huh? No, you no, just keep talking. Just keep talking. Yes, don't talking mind the comments. We're talking about you, not they to asked you, me what Mr. my bear. preference was, and I mm. said my preference is a happy bear. Oh, mm. see, well, at least it's for asking about hair this time as compared to one. You just never mind. So, so it's true. A happy bear is a happy bear, but he knows like there's a style where it's a little wavy and surferish that I like at a certain length. And Surf bear, can you imagine? Yeah. Like, dude, mom, I was ripping this totally gnarly wave across these, like, I think it was an outfield, mom, and I was just crazy. Why you didn't need to know this? Yeah. <clears throat> but his hair grows faster than mine. I'm a little jealous, but whatever. He's got beautiful hair, and that's where it stays. It's because I don't dye it. I don't do much of anything to it. I hardly even shampoo it. We were talking about that the other day, actually, is I probably should condition my hair a little bit more, but I don't like putting crap in my hair. So, I don't know. May only a mango. Screw up, scrub, scrub. I have a mango. Don't touch my mango. She's got a mango. <laughs> mango, okay. mango, mango. Now you have hair on your cutting board. Yeah, well, one has to draw a line. That hair was doing it, but you're just taking that away, aren't you? So I get... No, there. I don't want... Dirty wine. wine! I don't mind at all. All right. So, <laughs> for today's cutting implement, we have what I believe to be my great-grandfather's old police pocket knife, or so the story from my mother went back in the day. I'm curious to see what the seeds are like inside this. And I'm sure Shox is going to want just kind of a, a sliver. I don't know. We've decided just the tip doesn't work because that's not necessarily a fair oh. representation. Oh, oh. Here. Catch the seeds. <laughs> Here we have the inside of that pepper. Actually kind of a nice looking pepper. Seeds are, they look like they're primarily on the top half of things here. So I'm going to carve those out because A, I don't want to eat them and B, I want to plant them. So please excuse me while I stare down into my lap for a minute. Do, do, do. Yeah, it doesn't look scary at all. Actually, it really doesn't. I like the flavor of orange peppers as compared to like uh, red peppers, yellow peppers. 
and particular the green peppers. I mean, I'm I'm not a huge fan of the unripe pepper flavor. John says to okay. put, John Lord says to put pepper oil on your ends of your hair because you know we're talking about moisturizing your hair. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's gonna work with the sweat and the sun as it's going around and I'm flicking it flies like a horse. Look at my face. It's like, yeah, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm going to say thank you for the suggestion, and uh, we'll see if I remember to take you up on it later. Um, here we have that slightly gutted pepper. Oh, there's still a seed in there that I can see from my own angle. Come here, you. Save a seed, plant a forest. All right. So here we have yes, that. Um, and a slice for shocks. Just a slip. Just a slip. Right? That's a good size. That's a good size. That's acceptable. Sure. All right. All right. Um, I will take a slice myself because I'm already aware that my tolerance is way down. Hmm. It's making my mouth water. Mm -hmm. And I touch it with both hands. Don't touch it. Oh, eyes. that actually hit my nose. That's not good. <laughs> that, I'm going to pay for that. It's a delightful smell. Fruity. Is it fruity? Is it floral? Is it somewhere in between? It's the smell of orange pepper flesh. Orange peppers, red peppers, brown peppers. They all kind of have mm -hmm. a unique but similar flavor profile. And this is true to that. It has that sort of orange pepper sweetie more fruity than florally kind of sweet as the initial it's not killer hot though i mean by any means but i mean i'm just tiny sliver of a massive pepper but it's a nice slow build mm -hmm. i would totally chicken stir fry with this mm -hmm. we need to walk Ooh, can i use some for salsa tonight press like if we need to walk um you want that for salsa sure okay can you stay there? <clears throat> Salsa. <laughs> Here we have the uh, placenta from the inside of that pepper. Let's block that off a little bit better. Focus little camera. Poor little Logitech camera. So out of date. But it's a good productive pepper as far as future generations. Isn't that what they call it? The placenta? Pretty sure that's what mm -hmm. we call it. It's the middle part that holds the white part that holds all the seeds. The bit that holds the babies in. I mean, it's all the same, right? <clears throat> anyway, lots of seeds in that. And uh, it's a delightful, it's a delightful pepper flavor. So I'm definitely going to be growing some of these seeds next year. And I'm going to be quite curious here we've got the placenta from the other half here. Oh, I guess You're it wasn't complete. Seeds. I thought it was free. Yeah, the, uh, the other side there. Once again, you can't really see that. There. We've got nicely loaded, lots of seeds in there. So that is fabulous. The pith. Also, I think that um, I know the pith to be for fruit like pomegranates and oranges. Um, I didn't know that would be the same thing for peppers. I'm just following the crowd here. Everybody in the PLC seems to refer to it as the placenta. Eat the placenta. It's the hot part. Avoid the placenta. It's the bitter part. Oh, eat the Learning seed. Learning for bakers a wrench. Hi. Learning you don't have a wrench. How did that happen? Did something going wrong here. Is this the first time you've joined us? Because I've been tossing out these wrenches like they're candy. So. Keep that. Don't throw it at anybody unless they've really got it coming. And, you know, if they really, really have it coming, screenshot so you can share it with the class later. Anywho, here we have the other half of that pepper and uh, a nice collection of seeds. It does look nice. From that, I'm going to have a nice chunk from the top of this because common pepper lore is the <laughs> top is where the spices are tend tend to congregate and the bottom is going to be the sweeter part of the pepper so we'll see it is a very nice pepper though like it's not a, a killer linger it's just a nice little 
I'm still here sort of flavor in the mouth. Mm-hmm. Well, that slip was. Mm-hmm. You're welcome, then. <laughs> oh, I'm good, thanks. Um, yeah, it's not a disturbing system. heat by any means. It's really gentle. I mean, you notice it. It's a hot pepper. There's a spice. But um, this isn't scary. This isn't a challenge level pepper. I get a mild glow at worst. It's quite tasty. Mm-hmm. It's a really... I like orange peppers. I am a sucker for orange peppers because of their flavor. Uh-huh. And I am a sucker for purple peppers because I like purple. Mm-hmm. What can I say? Mm-hmm. Purple and blue pepper pods just intrigue me. I'm going to cross almost everything with uh, those stupid little blue peppers sooner or later. I saw a purple chili I'd like to get my hand or a purple uh, ghost chili I'd like to get my hands on. And Rev, if you eventually see this, I'd love to get my hands on some purple tiger seeds and or Mr. Charles P. If you get around to that, so purple tiger seeds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, purple peppers rock, right? So I think I actually want a little bit more of this. I wish I could share with you guys, but the internet have things has not gotten to that point yet. I can share with you. I'm going to have some in salsa later. There's some right there for salsa. I later. understand that. Oh, I'm going to be It's very lovely. Here we have the other variant. Do, 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 do. Still haven't quite figured out the whole presentation thing here at the desk. This one does look like it would be a much scarier pepper. Uh-huh. I'm really curious to see. Because, I mean, both of these came off of the exact same plant. So I am really curious to see if this is spicier in general. And or if seeds from that produce pods that look like that and seeds from this produce pods that look like this. I wonder if it's like a male-female thing, like the sweet peppers, how the bumps on the bottom indicate, you know, one usually has more seeds than the other. Maybe the bumps on the bottom is like a male-female thing. Well, I, I know the Facebook thing. post you're talking about. Is that that's complete poo. Oh. Um, what are we up here? Dane, yeah, purple peppers rock. Kelly, yeah, I want purple Peter pepper plant. That's just fun to say. <laughs> um, well, Charles P is supposed to be sending out Peter pepper seeds, and then Shocks and I are going to see whose Peter pepper gets bigger. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the bigger Peter pepper, JT or his woman? I hope I win that. That's all I can say. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm on enough to wear a skirt if I don't. That's all good. <laughs> Anyway, oh, off topic. Sanity, not my strong suit. Um, democracy bears, frankly, like that Harry Potter hat. Harry Potter hat. I feel like I should know something here. Oh, is it that you're talking about the one that like sends everybody to their dormitories and such? The kids loved Harry Potter, but I gave it limited attention. I was too busy wowing and doing important stuff in the background. As long as they're amused, everybody's fine. Dane's got a good question. Dane has a good question. Dane Brown, do you like to start the seeds before putting them in the aquaponics or just place the seeds in? I start everything before I put it into aquaponics. And uh, in the, the system I have downstairs right now, things need to be pretty well established and at least six to eight inches tall because that water level really does not come up as far as I would like in a, in a standard flood and drain type situation. And I have even thought about um, putting the table back in to, to play because with the bell siphon, I got a better chance of being able to start seeds in there because it brings it that much closer to the surface. But yeah, no, I start, I start seeds off on the side and then I'll just clean off the soil, plunk them on in there. I'll clean off most of the soil. A lot of people are really anal about that. I'm like, dirt, it's fish, it's garden. Uh, it goes in there. I try and get most of it off so I can use it for something else, but otherwise I don't really care. Uh, let's see here. Do my, do, 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 do. Territorial seed has purple peppers. Purple peppers of what particular shape? You know, if you pick a, pur- a pack of purple peppers, <sighs> it's not it's not easy to say. It really isn't. This, however, not a purple pepper. Really quite delightful. And I'm slowly working my way through this whole thing. So it's a good thing Shox has already nabbed that a little bit. What? Mm, we can use more of it for salsa tonight if you want. Or we can use less of it. 
and I can eat it now. So, yeah. It's good pepper. I would like to sit here and demolish it, but she has a good point. It will be fantastic with dinner because it's not terribly hot. It's delightful. It you know it's there, but it's not. Level. It's, it's nice. Mm -hmm. So Ahi Panic version two, version two, in the backward writing that is Interwebs World. I'm going to tuck those seeds off to the side. Excuse me. Not ignoring you. I'm just working on pepper stuff. And put them to dry. Um, there for now. Stay. <laughs> My desk is such a mess. It's ridiculous. A little cutting board on a clipboard for taking notes. It's crazy. Ah, uh, Eli, I love strains. Gotta say, my favorite pepper this year is the Criolla Cella. Saving a lot of seeds from that. Is that a sweet pepper? Is that a heat pepper? I don't think I've ever even heard of that one. Always fun. Dane Jelly, once you have the veggies in the winter, you're hooked on aquaponics. Yeah, okay. Well, that's exactly the thing. Back in Penticton, we had that little hoop house, greenhouse ish thing. And I had a lot of things growing all year round. A little bit of plastic over the top of the aquaponics. The kale just kept on growing. It was delicious. It only takes once. It only takes once. You harvest yourself a green leafy veg while there's snow on the ground between you and your garden. And that's it. You are hooked. There is no walking away. That's actually one of the... Um, I have a list somewhere of ways to tell. You might be an aquaponic junkie or something like that. And it's, it's on the... Actually, it's right here. It's on the list. Um, do you expect to be able to grow vegetables under the snow? Something along those lines. So, yeah, but yeah. you know, <clears throat> the snow packs in; it becomes insulated. Yes, we've learned that out here, and I'm actually hoping to take advantage of that fact with chickens and rabbits both. So, yeah, as far as greenhousing, though, mm, mm -hmm. you're in Victoria. Wish you still lived in Penticton. Um, <clears throat> Victoria is nice. The island's a little. Uh, I worry about big waves and, and, and people I'm friendly towards that live on the island. I'm just saying. Um, I don't wish I still lived in Penticton. I wish I lived in the Penticton garden season. Yeah. But living in the valley is, I kid you not, probably 25 to 30 times more expensive than living in this particular hole of the prairies. It's delightful here. It's oh. kind of the middle of nowhere. It's about 20 minutes away from everywhere. It's about an hour to two hours away from major communities in either province. It's it's nice. It is nice. I was yeah. born in Vancouver too. I was born in Winnipeg. So, so, yeah. Both big city folks, right? But when you get right down to it, living in a small town, so much better. Very hazy today. There's a smoke warning out, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, indeed, actually. We were, what was... Uh, how did I describe it this morning's electric firestorm orange or something? Yes. The color of the sky this morning was, was brutal. I don't, that's another thing I kind of don't miss about Penticton at all is forest fire season. Grass fires suck, but forest fires are just way worse. So it's all bad. It's yeah. just yeah, we've experienced hella too many. Been through both. I'll take a grass fire. Thank you very much. So. Next topic. Next topic. Um, I got flies in my beverage here. So, yeah, what's the next topic? I guess that's up to you guys because I am. Uh, you have a jar. I have a jar. Did I show you guys my jar? I think I mentioned briefly about the jar, my cheese whiz jar, because only the best for uh, the worst around here. A couple of ahi, ahuchapan peppers in there and the mead. Oh, actually. <clears throat> Thinking of the most recent meat, we found a bottle that we had saved for something just like Can this. Can I get it? Sure. If you want to go get it, that makes it easier. Cleaned it up, sanitized it, sterilized it, whatever, all that stuff. Oh, excuse me. And we've got it sitting in the fridge. And it has become one of the most tempting things in the fridge right now. The, the color on this is beautiful. Like, yeah, there you go. Properly bottled, there's that last melamel we made. And by properly, I mean, of course, reusable, resealable. Nice little rubber seal on this, actually. This is from like a wine or something. Yeah. 
So we have our friend who drinks that particular type of wine, saving them for us now. <laughs> and we are going to be bottling up a lot of those. Evil, welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, uh, that is super sexy in that bottle. I'm really looking forward to starting the coffee mead, but I guess that would be a methaglen, a little leery of any title that includes meth on the cooking channel. So it'll probably just be coffee mead and let people call it mead. Call it mead. Yeah, exactly. And I'll let people correct me in the, the chat down below. But based on the results I've gotten so far, I mean, that first mead was kind of weird because it was still carbonated and it was still really active and it was working. The second mead had so many things go terribly, terribly wrong. It came gushing out of the top and I had to put more berries in and more honey, honey in. Come more. see this. I have to show you what I did today. Yeah. That's how that started. That's when I noticed it was starting to gushing out of the perfect. top. Because it wasn't, it hadn't done that yet by the time I walked away mm -hmm. thinking it was, oh, it's all good. So I think I've got this figured out now and I think it's starting off in the five gallon container right off the hop. And I think it's starting off with about three gallons of water and then we'll add the rest of our crap. Should still leave me enough head space. It's coffee, so I'm going to cowboy coffee it up first. We'll get that nice and dark, you know, and then we'll pour it in there. It should be good. And I'm really, I'm really excited about like a honey, coffee, alcohol flavor combo there. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the crowd. Just got out of work. I'm Puppies. Get okay. Uh, the main house. Heck of a mess to clean up. Oh, puppies in the house. I'm, I love our puppy. He is so well behaved. That's so why he gets his own couch and we give him very little grief about it. Worst case scenario, we cut his nails while he's asleep sometimes. Uh, you said Punky had a good question. Mm -hmm. Question, you keep mentioning some future property you're going to in videos. Is there an actual property that you have plans of moving to soon? Or are you speaking generally? A little from column A and a little from column B. There are currently two parcels of land right now that are selling for $20,000. Okay. 10 acres. The dog speaks, speaks rightly. It's technically twice what I want to pay. I'd like to pay less than a thousand dollars an acre. I'd like to get a larger chunk of land than that, but realistically coming up with 20 grand, it's one of the more affordable price brackets. That's but what we got for this, we've got to, to move here too, right? So we, we've already achieved that. We've managed to manifest something worth that much already in the past. Um, and we're living in it now. So that's kind of my direction is I'd like to, I'd like to move there. I'd like to have the money. It's been for sale the whole time we've been here. So I don't think it's selling anytime soon. Um, however, I'm not in a cash or a capital position to go, Hey man, I'll offer you half of that cash right now. And when, you know, you get right down to it, if you try and talk your way into a rent to own situation, you got to offer them more than they're asking for them to really have any interest in that. I have no interest in that because it's already twice what I want to pay. So yes, it's a general <laughs> direction. We will be moving on to something larger than a half an acre because when you're when you live in the city, half an acre seems huge, but when you live on half an acre, it's really not so big. Um, and yes, there are two specific properties in mind right beside each other. Actually, I think they're right across the river from each other. I'm not quite sure which one faces south yet. So that will be the priority of the two. There's a difference of like $1,000 in the price though. And I don't really care. I got a chainsaw. <laughs> Hashtag goals. Hashtag lifestyle goals. Yeah. yeah. So a little from column A, a little from column B. That said, if anybody happens to have $30,000, you don't need contact me, email. We work something out. I'm happy to have an investor. I'm not allowed to launder money, but uh, what she doesn't know won't kill me. So. Yes, I know. Email me privately. <laughs> um, okay. Learning Curve Acres, there's a parcel. It's 28 acres for sale here Ooh. for 18 grand out near us. No, okay, here's the deal. Where is that? You're in Ontario, I think, right? Oh. While I would love to hop in an RV and travel east until I get uh, out to the Rock area, eh? you know, like visit a few folks there and visit everybody going back west out until we get to the other coast, eh? And I'll uh, do like the Beach Comers thing with Bruno Juicy and uh, up, up and down to the West Coast for a while there. Uh, as much as I'd like to take that trip, eh? I am done moving into other provinces, eh? I have gone through enough stuff 
with changing it's my real. name and my identification and all this stuff. It's just, I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm in Manitoba and I'm staying here. My accent's gone to hell, but it, that's how frustrated I am by the idea of changing provinces for ID. You know, it's Canada. Shouldn't we just be able to move right, from right. place to place? But I guess it's easier to move around in Canada than it is in the States. So I weep well, for my brothers and sisters down across said. the line. Uh, Lisi, some of my homestead. Okay, yeah, where you at, bro? If you're in Manitoba, we can talk. Unless you're up north of Dauphin, in which case, sorry, bro, when we get a bigger yard, you can come down. Uh, Ottawa Valley. So you're close to Brother Troll. Well, close-ish. Closer than I am. <laughs> I'm still like a day's drive away from you guys. And I don't mean like driving over the course of a day. I mean 24 hours of highway. <laughs> USA, New Hampshire. Woohoo! No, -uh, not going to happen. I ain't changing countries either. <laughs> um, if you think changing provinces is rough, try changing countries. Technically, I could because... Um, my mother was an American citizen until she died. She never actually did get her dual citizenship, to the best of my knowledge. My father was actually born in Columbus, Ohio, which explains a lot of confusion. And just, I, was, I thought he was born in Winnipeg, and I'm like, how the hell did you guys ever meet in the first place? That doesn't make sense. But I, like, if I could explain for every second of my life on paper for the last 43 and a half years, give or take, then in theory, I could have my dual citizenship. I could move across the line, and I could you know, live in fun places like Texas where you can grow peppers right up until what about Christmas and start again by mid January, Charles give or take, you know, I could move and harass Rev down there on the, uh, the right in coast the there down in the swamps. Yeah. It's the bears and snakes in his swamps. I tell you what, but now here's, <clears throat> here's another reason I stay in Canada. And in particular, a reason I like Manitoba, it gets so blankety blank cold here. We don't really have a lot of poisonous stuff running around. Where we lived in Penticton, there were rattlesnakes and all kinds of fun stuff. Scorpions. Our friend found a rattlesnake downtown. Downtown. Like, last week. Like hanging out near the Starbucks. Where downtown. people walk. I used to work. You know how many rattlesnakes we have in Manitoba? Zero. Zero. The closest thing we have to a dangerous snake is a garter snake having a bad day. They look at you, they'll be all like, oh, I'm bad, I'm scary. And you hold up your hand to them and they're realizing this is going nowhere. And they just kind of slither off. So it's, uh, no, I like that a lot better. You don't have to worry about scorpions when you're flipping over the rocks or black widows. I mean, it was pointed out to me, we do have the brown recluse spider out here. And wolf spiders. Wolf spiders are not an issue. Um, Unless you're a wolf. I actually had a wolf cross puppy. She had terrible reactions to wolf spiders. She could get all swollen up and stuff. The now I understand why, so they're, darn cute. why they're called wolf spiders. Oh, right? they're so cute. They are really cute. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the outdoor channel. I think it is it's our first yard snake. That's the perfect example of one of these snakes trying to be super tough when we first got here. It's like, oh, they buddy. they eat slugs out of the garden. So. They do. And they eat um, small rodents. rodents and stuff. And, you know, I am happy to encourage the snakes to discourage the slugs, right? It's all part of that, what I think of as permaculture, mm -hmm. because it's kind of working with nature and what, what nature is going to provide me to get her done. We are eventually you know? going to build a snake den. I kind of have one going by one of the back gates. Um, I'm piling up all the branches and such so that they have constantly got somewhere they can get into and away from birds and such. Um, you mean a snake den is like, isn't digging down to make a snake den? Narcissus, oh, sexy, whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. That's her project. This is the first I'm hearing about that, but I'm totally cool with it because I want to make mud bricks too. And this mud's got to come from somewhere. So I like digging. She does like digging this whole, the movement towards no dig, no till gardening has shocks a little disappointed because she doesn't get to rip up sod anymore. And she's, I have a she, garden. She does have a garden and she's ripping up sod in it. Uh, her, <laughs> her fairies are vicious little farmers, man. Yes. I tell you what, zero ecological friendliness in there. There's fairies got like tractors out there. Actually, I should take out the um, John Deere tractors out there. Trish, you need a wrench? <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. 
Do do do. I found a real pretty garden snake, almost a foot long, yesterday. See, they are pretty, right? And like that stripe along the back, and even when they think they're big and tough, they're really just not that scary. <laughs> Nothing compares to walking down the trail with your dog one day and you're hearing <laughs> this. <laughs> you know that rattle. Oh, that one, yeah. And it's like, uh, where's my dog? Where's the leash? Where's the rattle coming from? Do I back away slowly or run forward quickly? Yeah, you know, I was like your all of these questions as your bladder is getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, you're like, and you're looking, it, going, "My God, I brought the kids out here too." Um, yeah. yeah, and then there's always that one psycho friend. It's like, "Oh man, we should go get it." There's like a dollar a head or tail tag. Scott. Yeah. Scott was always suggesting new and interesting things we could do with rattlesnakes. I thought you were going to say like, about the time that those guys were on the no, trail the and rattles, there was yeah. this little, like, little garden <laughs> snake. And these two, like, big macho, muscular men all, like, strutting their stuff. Come Hashtag flex. Up behind us. And they're like, oh, what are you guys looking at? We're like, oh, we're looking for this snake that took off over here. And they're like, oh, a snake. <laughs> and we're like, are you kidding me? It's like this big. You just scared it more. <laughs> but it rattlesnakes are a whole scary thing. Totally different game. <laughs> this was just a garter snake that we were chasing back in the valley. It was like, wow, I didn't know we had cute, friendly snakes out here. Come here, little guy. And yeah, these guys were big and buff, and they're all like tank top, <laughs> clearly still sweating and glistening from the gym. Yeah, it was snake. It was priceless moments was, one of those absolutely crazy. priceless moments yeah. yeah uh evil my main hiker friend is completely terrified of all snakes your hiker friend needs one of those stakes that's basically got a couple of scissor blades blocked open on the bottom and pow takes their head right off as you're putting it down mm -hmm. you hold it down it was one of the things i was going to work on if we stayed in the valley a lot longer but we didn't so i don't have to worry about that now i can pick up snakes and juggle them i can do whatever i want with these guys they won't like it much but there's not a lot they can do about it <laughs> i want to see you juggle snakes on video i'm calling you on this one <laughs> you have my attention <laughs> Thumbs up for JT juggling snakes. <laughs> Does that have to be live? No. <laughs> that helps. Rubber snakes. Maybe I can do this. Snake parts. Maybe I, I got three snake heads here. Who knows? Maybe Ra um, care, Charles is going to send us one of those serpent's head peppers. Does that count? Serpent's head. <laughs> she's laughing but i have actually kept snakes um i have carried them around you know what's really it? fun is or answering the door in a bathrobe with like a four foot boa constrictor around your neck that'll get some really interesting looks from the people trying to sell you whatever is in the briefcase john it's, says john lord says they're just forest chicken sticks waiting to be at Forest chicken sticks, the garter snakes. Yeah, well, they're a good source of protein. And um, one of the videos I was watching today, yesterday, is like, give the chicken the opportunity. And like, let's remember, these guys are little T-Rexes. Give the chicken the opportunity and they will let their diet be like 70% meat because they are. that They are the, they're dinos. They're little furry, fluffy, cute dinos that we did the human thing with. <laughs> we trapped them. We put them in cages. There are little workhorses now chickens as the case may be lay eggs for us or we will eat you howdy brandon you <laughs> did make it it's it's totally true <clears throat> chickens are sadistic evil bastards you know i'm gonna tell you a funny story um about my uh, ex-brother-in-law when he was a young man he got sent to live with his father um he was supposed to be kind of a punishment but it actually worked out to be a really good thing for him uh he went out to live on the farm anyway and it was the first time that he had been out and they were harvesting the chickens and he was still in single digits and they chopped the head off of this thing because they were doing it kind of old fashioned. I think they were trying to do it to, to scare him out a little bit. Um, and this, this chicken apparently just came 
straight for him like a heat-seeking missile. And he ran around the farmyard for like five minutes, and this chicken was chasing him everywhere we went. So by the time uh, I got to know him, it was like 15, almost 20 years later, we're going out to the petting zoo, and there are these chickens coming up. And I'm like, oh, chicken's cute, and you should have seen this guy, man. He was the nearest tree up in the branches. And I'm like, dude, you're one of the buffest people I know, and you're afraid of chickens. And that's, of course, when I heard the story of his childhood trauma. Um, howdy, howdy. We have some new people. Mechanic, I see you have joined us. And Tim, welcome to the show. Give you guys your wrenches. Don't throw them at people because they will throw them back. There's always that to be taken care of. That's Chicken Master. See, that's right, right? Learning Curve Acres. I love my chickens. They're the sweetest cuddle monsters ever. And you have bantam chickens, right? Um, uh, based on, I believe it was your advice, I went down a rabbit hole on the interwebs here and I was looking at chickens, uh, chicken varieties in particular. And holy crap, there are a lot of types of bantam chickens. So I, I'd be curious to know what type you've got. Evil, we had a chicken that made a beeline from a cat after its head was off. I think it traumatized the cat. Well, <laughs> You know, there's karma in the world, and one has to wonder just how bad did your cat harass the chicken before the chicken lost its head about the situation? You know, like, is this just the chicken taking its last chance to mess with the cat in return? Was there a relationship there that perhaps you weren't aware of? You go to work, the cat and the chicken, they got their back and forth. I've seen chicken around too many times. Yes. I watch too many cartoons, but hey, it, it keeps my insanity colorful and entertaining. <laughs> and as I remember, the cat was a bit of a dick. Most are, you know, like that's why I like dogs. Dumb loyalty. I take dumb loyalty in a dog he can hear any you. day. Yeah, but he can't say anything about it. Mute loyalty. I'll take mute loyalty because she doesn't like the word dumb, I guess. Um, Stubborn loyalty. I'll take mule like loyalty. loyalty. I will take the codependence. I like that one. I will take the codependence of a dog over the up yours of a cat any day. Cats know they don't need you. They don't care. You know, for example, ours got out. We were training to be outside cat anyway. And he clearly had a plan. We haven't seen hiding or hair of that cat since. I think he might have sprayed on something in the backyard a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> But I ain't actually seen the cat. It's fine anyway, because he was like five weeks old. And he was this little thing. He had he was a cutie cat little paw. Yeah, we brought him in, grew him up to a reasonable size, and we started wanting to go out in the middle of the winter. So we took him out, and it was yeah. cold. So we came back in and had a little leash for him and stuff. And we're training him up to be an yeah. outdoor cat anyway. That was kind we of the point. Wanted to keep him around, but he was like gone. Gone. Yeah. So. Yeah, catch your dicks. I like dogs and livestock. I like the livestock. If they get out of hand, you can eat them. Problem solved. Uh, back to the conversation here. Evil, I guess it's just like being subservient also why I got married. I'm not even going there. <laughs> Learning curve acres. One looks like foghorn leghorn right on. He was one of my old, my favorites of the old cartoons. Remember when cartoons used to be able to offend you and it was okay? Boy, I said, boy, boy, uh, boy, but, 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 boy. <laughs> him and that dog, I tell you what. Uh, I can never remember the dog's oh. name though. So if anybody uh, got that handy oh. hound something? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. So. Trish, I've had Cornish Rocks and Rhode Island Reds. Never lost any here in the lake effect zone of Lake Michigan. All right, so here's a question, too, since we're back on chickens. I've got chickens on the brain. It started off as peppers, but she took my pepper away. I didn't. You have it right She there. wanted me to give my pepper up for dinner. Mm. Do you heat your chicken coops? Chicken, coop, uh, chicken keepers, particularly in cold climates, seem to have this two-sided argument going on, too, with very little room for people sitting on the fence. Heating a chicken coop, yay or nay? Charles, where's the beard? Um, well, as I put it in my video the other day, I wanted to practice shearing sheep. It's the only fur I have the right to. I gave it a go. Uh, I imagine by now the beard is probably being um, intricately incorporated into a couple of bird nests as a finer sort of insulation. 
Yeah. Or back scratching up. Yeah, right. That's mm-hmm. kind of what I'm thinking. And uh, I've seen a lot of stuff that suggests that chickens are pretty good at regulating their own temperature anyway, as long as there's not too much of a difference between coop and run. They're fine. Uncle Wimpy, no heat in the coop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There we go. Trish, you missed the pepper part. Oh, well, see, there you go. I got more pepper. There's no suffering with this pepper, but I'll use that as an excuse to eat more of it. It's tasty what it is, Mm -hmm. and he's going to eat it all before I get to use it for dinner. That's the plan. (laughs) So just a little stripe of it here because she makes a really good pico de gallo. So... Now I'm taking it away. (laughs) She took my toy. No, I took your snack. She took my snack toy. My toy snack. I grew those. Hi, Jessica. Hang on. I'll get you a wrench. (laughs) I'm not going to take your wrench away. Um, oh, they get minus 30 learning curve and never lost a chicken. Minus 30. Yeah, see, right? Ooh. That's what we get. That's we get attempts, like yeah. minus 40, I think, is the worst we've had so far. Shocks is out making instant snow with tea. <laughs> that was really cool. Instant clouds. Well, it was a little bit of both. It goes up, it forms a cloud. As it freezes, it comes down as snow. Mm-hmm. It was fun. It's gray area. It was fun, though. Yeah, definitely yeah, was fun. Was like, yeah. Anyway. And you were out there like painting in the snow with food coloring and squirt bottles and stuff. Yeah. Shock has had a lot of fun with the snow since <laughs> we've been out here, but she kind of grew up in BC, right? And snow is not I had snow. It's not I've, the same. Yeah, we could actually make snowballs and snowmen and build igloos. And That's true. Snow out here in Manitoba. Is like glitter. It's light. It's fluffy. You can move it. It blows back on you mm-hmm. or it's gross. It's like styrofoam snow, those little pellets that you see in the movies, the snow scene, right? It doesn't pack. You can't do anything with it. And this year was really, really weird. Even when it melted, it didn't really get to that slushy stage. It just gone. The whole, the RM was digging out big trenches because they were expecting in a bit of a flood. Well, we flooded almost up to the house the other year. Yeah. Before that. Up front, we've had some issues. We're taking the snow shovel and like moving water into the culverts. Yeah, creating little waves. (laughs) So like that was, that was our our aim at designing gardens as well was to trench it and put where the water would go away from our house. Pretty much. And that's part of another reason that the gojis are moving up in that front corner is because they're going to really spread those roots out like a willow wood and just going to suck up that moisture. So, um, hubby is home. Well, have a good evening, learning curve. Thank Hi. you for joining <laughs> us. Say hello to the hubby. Or don't. I don't know. What's a, I don't know. Anyway, yes, thank you for joining us. Maybe ducks be better. Oh, I'm not getting back in the chicken versus duck discussion. I went down that rabbit hole too, and I think for now I am I am pro chicken, I am pro future ducks, but right now I am pro current chicken. And when we we do get on to that specific perpetual kind of generalized acreage concept, um, <laughs> and then we'll we'll really get fowl and we'll get geese, ducks, chickens, guineas, really explore the whole Baby thing. Goat. Baby goats aren't really foul, but that's, oh, she's with me there. Um, <laughs> yeah, and we are, of course, going to explore other livestock that goes along with that. But, uh, yeah, I was particularly intrigued by some of the bantam varieties of chickens that I saw and uh, would like to grow, I don't know, little clusters of that specific breed, help keep the breed alive. There are a few cattle that long run if we get really large acreage i wouldn't mind breeding some for novelty's sake and some because you know childish childish dreams fainting goats um are funny i kind of would get a fainting goat just to see our dog's reaction to it (laughs) and then just kind of have it ever since then because i think it would really mess with lazzy's head but Bye, Tim. Thank you for joining us. Glad you could stick around for a little bit. Bantams, little eggs, duck, big eggs. Yeah, well, yeah, ducks. 
laying kind of like clutches two weeks at a time, and then they take some time off, whereas chickens will just keep going. As long as the temperature grows for them, the day seems long enough, boom, egg, right? Like that's pretty much the theory every 25 hours, because chickens are from Mars. Um, so they have a 25 hour day, just like Mars. They're aliens. Just saying. Um, they are the alien invaders. Chickens came down, ruined everything for the Egyptians, started history again. Anyway, this is why I need an active sensor board. I was talking about eggs. That's what got us back on with the chickens and chickens taking over the world and chickens. Yeah. Chickens taking over the world would be terrible. Um, yeah. Bantams, little eggs. I can use more in baking. Works just fine. Scramble up three eggs instead of two. Works just fine. The only place that's really a problem is with fluffy eggs, in which case you go to the store, you buy a larger egg, you trade maybe a dozen for a couple duck eggs or something. Fluffy eggs are worth the effort and the pain in the um, keister. Jessica Bird, I love my chickens. We have two bantam Polish roosters, and they're a couple of silly ditzy guys. My friend wants ducks and rabbits. I'm iffy about ducks. So you're pro rabbits then. Well, he's halfway there. Um, Polish rooster. So I guess you're not in like a, a town type setting. We're still not allowed to have roosters here. We, we live in the middle of nowhere, but our village of like 700 people still won't allow roosters. So meat birds are currently out for me, you know. <laughs> Uncle Wimpy, conversation took a turn there. You think... Yeah, you should try chatting with me in the pub sometime. Your conversation takes so many turns. It's, uh, what's the best way to describe it? About as crooked as a miner's convention. Yeah, yeah. But that's a whole different thing, too. So, yeah, chickens, peppers. She took my peppers away. I'm looking forward to trying this one here. My pepper tolerance has gone down, 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 downhill. Uh, these last couple of years, these longer winters, I'm not getting as many fresh peppers in my diet. I think that's got a lot to do with it, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd like to get more actual hot peppers into me. We'll see. Yeah. yeah I actually deliver roosters. They come in boxes. I won't tell you what we think they're used for. You actually deliver roosters in town. That's cool. Texas. Yet another reason that Texas is a great state. Esther. Mm, I wonder what they're used for. Yes. I have an idea, but I'm not going to talk about it. And I'm not going to talk about it either. I imagine they talk about it in the change rooms and stuff. So that's uh, locker room at work. Well, so does it come with a sticker? It says live rooster or something as, as compared to live chicken. I'm back. Wife called. Well, evil, you know, always listens. It, it, people say don't, but listen to your wife. Trust me. Happy wife. Happy life. Yes, sir, says livestock. Oh, my goodness. Well, great, I guess. Sucks to be you. I hope you get a truck. You don't have to stick that guy in, like, one of those mail bags on the side. Around Easter, we deliver tons of chicks. Yeah, I get so deal of end up delivering Easter bunnies, too. Rabbits. Everybody's getting rabbits. A few months later, this is not as cute as I was expecting. Rabbit for sale. People like me going, <clears throat> I'll take that money for $5. Actually, we found a few people around here with uh, potential rabbits for us in the future. So that's going to be interesting too. I think um, chickens are just going to be easier to get into though. So yeah, we'll see. Anywho, guys, I don't know. We've been uh, with 50 minutes, give or take change. Uh, I got no more pepper pods to taste at this time. That said, um, if any of you who happen to live in warmer climates would like to see me really, really suffer, go ahead, send me pods. By the time they get here, they'll definitely be ripe. And uh, why not? I'll, I'll eat them. I've eaten just about everything I've been sent in the mail. I'm far too trusting of a YouTuber, I guess. But that said, I've gotten some incredibly cool treats for having that bit of faith. So, Jessica, what peppers do you recommend for 20 gallon indoor aquaponic system? Sweet peppers, probably sweet mini peppers. Um, aquaponic gardens and peppers are a big, interesting gray area. People say you can't really grow productive peppers in there. I say it's about fine tuning 
how often you water, how much water you're giving them, how long they're dry for. So in the meantime, unless you want to really, really screw around with your aquaponic garden, trying to figure all that out, I would stick to sweet peppers. They're going to develop those juices, right? And many sweet peppers, they gotta, they're going to ripen faster for you. So I figure you're going to get more productivity out of your plant in that 20 gallon system. So yeah, any lunchbox peppers, I guess, are kind of a sweet mini pepper, mini bells, of course, mixed mini bells, rainbow mini bells. They come in a couple of different uh, names, labels, varieties, whatever. If you want to grow a hotter pepper, yeah, make sure you cut down your watering cycle. And again, grow anything with a small pod and a, a short ripening cycle because it really seems to me like ripening peppers in aquaponics is about the amount of heat that you throw at it therefore the ones that i've had in my um, indoor garden like the ahi panic ones that were downstairs already this year they never really ripened up on the plant because it, it never really gets above 70 down there in the summertime so that's something you got to bear in mind too if they're somewhere really really warm fly at her i still say sweets though uh trish used to raise rabbits uh, hubby said you raise i will eat he didn't butcher ended up with 100 one winter so trish you don't you're not cool with butchering the bunnies either or still have a bell pepper growing one year but i had some setbacks heater set at 80 yeah see 80 is a good temperature for peppers they like that i'm still curious to know how you ended up with 100 rabbits though i mean looks pretty straightforward there's a little board you stick their head into it kind of pull them by the feet and game over just done quick and easy send me down to a butcher shop then i don't know um maybe i'm desensitized by my video games maybe i'm cold and heartless because i'm an aquarian maybe it's because i grew up on farms because my stepdad worked for agriculture canada therefore i've been seeing this stuff my whole life but the idea of um, such a swift and painless dispatch of a rabbit. I'm, I'm really not worried about that. It's the larger animals that I think I'm going to have problems with because the dispatch is not as clean when you get right down to it. When it comes down to raising pork, when it comes down to raising cattle, I'm going to, I'm going to have issues. Roland Homestead. Hey, welcome to the chat, buddy. Now, he's got some, if, if you're the right channel, I th I'm thinking of, you've got some really interesting ideas on winterizing your chicken coops. Well worth taking a look at uh, for Canadian chicken folks. So I believe rolling you're in Wisconsin, WI, I think is Wisconsin. I've been wrong before. Be wrong again. Consistency is key in all things. Uh, Trish, I'm an Aquarian too. I had a guy butcher him. He got half I only cooked. Okay. Right on. Um, see, if you can get somebody else to do it for you, then great. Everybody wins. You know, I imagine maybe somebody else got the hides in that situation too. Cause if you're squeamish about the butchering, I don't know how tanning would go for you. That's something else that I'm, I think we're both kind of looking forward to is messing yeah. around with tanning hides and uh, working them. I have a very strong opinion on what a muckluck is. I intend to make my own because I like going barefoot or as close to it as I possibly can. And I feel if I make these the way I want to make them, I can effectively go barefoot all year. Because barefoot surrounded by a bunny, it's just not the same as being in a commercial shoe. So yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that. <clears throat> no tanning, he kept the hides. Yeah, there you go, all right? So the next step becomes, you know, marinating your rabbit and then you've got your jerk. See, I'm thinking about jerking rabbits. I'm thinking about smoked rabbits, some rabbit stew, oh, braised rabbit. We've got just the fire pit for that sucker. You just clamp him in there and just gently rotisserie bunny. I'm, yeah, I'm oddly excited about the idea of doing that because with raising our own meat, a lot of people think it's cruel and whatever. But I know for a fact that this animal from birth to dispatch has lived a better life than they would have in a factory farm situation. One thing that I did really get a taste for as, as I was growing up and going with my stepdad in these Agriculture Canada situations from packing plant to packing plant 
was I don't, I don't like seeing the animals raised in, in the way that they currently, they are. And in modern ranchers and farmers defense, they kind of have no choice but to do it this way to stay active in such a competitive marketplace. And there are so many people consuming all these goods. Like, no, if you're doing it for yourself, it becomes a completely different game. That, that animal has known love its whole life. It was dispatched with kindness, uh, you know, around here. We will even thank its spirit for its sacrifice and we will do our best to use all of it for our betterment and the betterment of our family and we will carry on. And that is, I think, how the world was supposed to work. And a lot of people have lost touch with uh, the food supply. I'm going to go to the chat and see if I can find a new topic here. Uh, if you do tanning with any hides, use a ringer washer rollers. You'll be able to roll and roll. Uh, ringer washer. I look talking about those old fashioned washing machines. That would be a great way to soften up the hide. I was watching a couple people and I just like pulling and pulling and stretching and pulling. And that just looked really time consuming. And I'm not quite sure how I feel about that, but uh, my meat birds have a great life rolling. Well, that's exactly it, right? We, you know how they say when you cook food with love, it makes a difference. It's not illogical then that if you raise food with love, it also makes a difference. And like I say, at least you have the comfort of knowing that this animal had a good life. It wasn't stressed in life. It wasn't stressed in death. Yeah. I just, I'm, I should probably get a plant related topic at this point. Mm -hmm. so. Bye, Uncle Wimpy. But Uncle Wimpy, you're leaving us. Well, thank you for joining us. And he, he is uh, pointed at the door rather pathetically. So I guess we should probably be wrapping it up here too. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm really enjoying these live stream chat situations and uh, kind of how it's all going. Like I have said on a couple of other occasions, if you also are enjoying the live, live stream chats, make sure you hit that bell. YouTube's doing a rough job of notifying people as it is. So you definitely, you want to make sure that is taken care of. If you're enjoying these pepper tastings, these all seem to kind of be going on the live this year. And if you want to see me taste some psychotic peppers, like you can grow in warmer climates, you'll probably have to send them to me. No, I am not doing the death nut challenge. And oh, for the record, as of when we checked the mail today, Bambi has not arrived. Bat chip has not arrived. And well, basically none of the cool things that people are sending me have arrived. So we are checking the mail every day to keep an eye on that though. And I will let you guys know when things show up. Yeah, I think that is a wrap. I have some Reaper peppers. Well, if you want to send them, I'm not going to say no. I've had some dried reaper sent to me and I enjoyed those. I put those into some candies and stuff, but yeah, I haven't had a fresh reaper yet. I know it's going to hurt, but I'm willing to do it. I'm in a warmer clim climate. What psychedelic pepper can I grow to send to you? Well, you know, there's the Guadalajara and insanity pepper from that Simpson episode, or I don't know, whatever you're growing, if you want to send it up and uh, have me give it a try. Just let me know. And if you want me to uh, give anybody credit in the chat, just slip a little letter in there with them peppers. <laughs> we'll see what I can do. Pretty easy to accommodate people's requests on that kind of stuff nowadays. Uh, YouTube is making it very easy to go live. And like I said, if I do it as an unscheduled event and just poof, go live, I get access to the chat stream. And uh, poor Shox isn't quite as tied to her computer and she can actually join me over here. But um Again, I think it's like the third or fourth time I've said this. I'm going to wrap it up today. Thank you guys so much for joining along. And I, yeah, I look forward to the next live stream. Take care, everybody. Have a fantastic day. And I think Batman's going live later tonight. So if you're into the live streams, check him out.